Yo, what is up Guardians? I am Sincere and today we'll be exploring the first of a video series, I hope, which explores how to raise your skill ceiling and skill bracket in Destiny 2. By the end of this video, you'll be thinking like a seasoned Crucible Slayer and those consistent lighthouse trips won't seem so unattainable. I'll be breaking down what the Destiny 2 skill gap is, identifying exactly what it means and we'll focus on one aspect in today's video to improve that. Let's get to it. Let's begin by defining what skill gap means in a general sense. So let's Google it. A skills gap is a gap between the skills an employee has and the skills he or she actually needs to perform a job well. There are a few interesting things with this definition. First of all, we need to define what the job is and what it actually means to perform well and what that means in the context of Destiny 2. Let's take the most popular Crucible playlist as an example, Control. In Control, the objective is to outscore your opponents by controlling the zones. The more zones you control, the higher the kill multiplier is, the more points you can score per kill. Now let's simplify things some more by looking at the best case scenario and the worst case scenarios in control. In the best case scenario, you triple cap all zones. In this scenario to maintain the lead, you would need to at least trade every single kill. Now let's flip the scenarios. Let's consider the worst case scenario. You are on the opposing team that just got triple capped. To regain control, you will most likely need to kill members of the opposing team to at least buy enough time to recap a zone and regain map control. Therefore, we can summarize that the fundamental limiting step in even an objective-based game mode like control is predicated on your effective killing potential. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. No shit, Sherlock. Sincere, we already knew that. But it's important that I highlight this. Because in Destiny, unlike other team or ability based shooters, which typically have strictly defined roles and responsibilities, everyone plays the same role in Destiny PvP. Thus, your skill gap is solely linked to your killing potential. At this point, I'd like to make something supremely clear. I'm not talking about talent. Talent, in the words of Tiger Woods, is something that you are born with and a skill is something that you develop. This video will focus on developing your skill even if you have potato aim, like myself, to maximize your ability. The question now is how can you maximize your killing potential in Destiny 2? This video won't focus on loadouts or mod combinations, but rather I'll be focusing on the macro and the micro game. The macro game being the overarching philosophy you should adopt and the micro game being exactly how you execute those strategies in real time. In this video, we'll focus on one thing alone, survivability, or in other words, staying alive. If you've ever been on an airplane, you will somewhat be familiar with this principle, the oxygen mask principle. To summarize, this simply refers to the fact that you should focus on saving yourself first, because then, and only then, can you truly impact or help others around you. If you ever watch Halo competitive scrims, they typically call out play your life or be hard kill. The longer you can live in tough situations, the better the chance of your teammates either coming to the rescue or creating a scenario where they become the distraction which you can capitalize on or vice versa. The same concept is true in the Crucible and this is where I see a lot of new players going wrong. A lot of new players or let's say inexperienced or bad crucible players fall into the trap of thirsting kills rather than prioritizing staying alive. This tends to get them killed, leading to more frustration, fueling a perpetual cycle of aping or desperation kills. In fact, this lizard brain problem prevails throughout every skill demographic from beginner through to the sweat lord. However, the difference is a sweat lord actually has the killing potential to bail themselves out of terrible decision making by compensating on skill or talent. Now, this is not a license to say, well, I'll just bait my teammates or camp in the back of the map with a dead man's tail or a sniper rifle. 
What I'm describing is a type of thought process and mentality that is able to aggressively and intentionally engage and disengage combat scenarios with this underlying principle. Okay, okay. Sincere, what does this mean in reality? I'm originally a fighting game player, so I'll be sneaking in some fighting game lingo to help illustrate. In fighting games, there's a term that refers to the neutral game called footsies. A huge part of footsies is poking, and in destiny or in shooters, this is peaking and challenging. Knowing how, where, and when to peak are super important. Utilizing everything in your toolkit to improve your footsies, your neutral game, in order to create a high percentage opportunity for you to punish and defeat your opponent is the goal of footsies. This is what I'll be diving into, so let's break it down. Chapter 1 Engaging To improve your chances of winning gunfights or going from encounter to encounter, consider how you approach and how you engage combat situations. First, you need to identify the point of attack. Then you'll want to make sure you take the fight on your terms as much as possible. While you're approaching, you'll want to play to your toolkit. For example, I hate to say it, but hunters or warlocks, you will want to approach most angles from the air where possible. If you're playing a more ground-based subclass like Titans, I strongly advise mastering the art of sliding from cover to cover, not being so linear in your approach. We all know how hilarious it can be dealing with straight lining opponents. There is a reason why stompy hunters or float warlocks catch everyone off guard. Though against good teams and better players, they will know to look out for this and will punish you accordingly. If you didn't know all lifts or jumps, leave a visual cue as well as an audio cue. Pro tip, if you know you're facing an opponent who likes to play to their mobility advantage, always keep your eyes out for this strategy. In particular, listen out for the audio cue when warlocks eat their grenade. If you hear the audio and know you're in a warlock floating hotspot, then you already know to keep your eyes peeled. Don't think of using your grenades only as cleanup tools to finish a kill. You can use your grenades as a zoning tool to restrict your opponent's line of sight on you and for you to take advantage of map control. As soon as you do this, then you can begin to collapse as they try to flee or as they try to navigate your grenade. Lightning grenades, solar grenades and trip mines work wonders for this sort of strategy. Now after the approach comes the peak or the challenge. This is the ultimate fundamental when it comes to taking a gunfight. You have to look at your radar before you shoot and the moment you stop shooting. Radar management deserves its own video but for the purposes of today's video, I'll leave it here. On a strategic level, you'll always want to challenge or take fights on your own terms as much as possible, especially if you know that you're taking on multiple opponents at any one time. Eventually, you'll learn certain combos that you can throw to give you a high percentage of living in these moments. I do want to do a video specifically on crucible counter moves, so stick around for that. But back to the point. This means pre-nading, pre-rifting, pre-barricading before a fight if necessary. Hunters unfortunately don't have a class ability that accounts for this. Invis could be the play in some scenarios, but I don't recommend building a consistent strategy around Invis because most seasoned Crucible players will eagle eye this and punish this accordingly. All classes can do what I like to call risky peeking on contested angles. This usually works by sliding into the opponent's line of sight and instantly using your class ability, the Titan Barricade, the Hunter Dodge, or for top tree warlocks, you can Icarus dash backwards into cover and then throw down a rift. But be careful, this is not foolproof as you are vulnerable to snipers or a well-coordinated team shot. In comp or trials, this is super important to master and it also creates opportunities for your team to either flank or bait and switch. If you watch my video on the Thunder Crash Titan, I also cover how Ballistic Slam helps with this as well. Chapter 2 Disengaging Disengaging is probably the most difficult and most important skill to develop when it comes to survival. 
you have to be able to recognize the specific moment when you need to back out of a gunfight or accept the reality that you might not be able to clean a one-shot opponent. This does mean you will have to get better at processing information in real time, but situation awareness or game sense is something you can build over time. And the more you live in these tough situations, the more game sense you'll acquire. If you don't do this, you will likely find yourself being out of position and likely getting collapsed on with no backup, leading to some extremely frustrating deaths. This is something I'm personally still working on, but depending on how well you can master this will determine how much more consistent your performance will be in the crucible. If you do execute this, you will find the opposite tends to happen. The opponent will find themselves thirsting after you and you will tend to catch them out of position, straight lining you or desperating you and you can punish them for it. Over time, you'll learn more advanced timings for when you can re-peak without having full shields, when you're likely to catch your opponent off guard. This type of feedback loop when it comes to disengaging does feel extremely rewarding and will encourage you to consistently make galaxy brain plays. You might not always be able to get away scot-free, but know that if you practice this often, you'll be rewarded for staying alive. At the very least, on a strategic level, this will allow your teammates to take map control. If you're a basketball fan like myself, it's a little bit like making the opposing team work harder on defense, which can lead to some fatigue-based mistakes on the offensive end. The same thing is true in Destiny. Being a hard kill tends to frustrate opponents in the same way. After you successfully disengage, you'll want to repeat the same strategies I talked about in chapter one for engagement. Now on to chapter three, the point of no return. When all else fails or maybe even succeeds, this is the point of no return. I won't tell you how to shoot or strafe, but at this point, you don't have any advantage over your opponent and it really can be a 50-50 situation. Your gun skill versus theirs, or hell, in Destiny 2, whoever flinches first. But something I've recently implemented in my own 1v1 gameplay is to be in perpetual motion. You want to be as mobile as possible. Throw in a slide to the left or a slide to the right. Dodge mid gunfight or throw in an Icarus dash. These things will break your opponent's aim, but you have to develop the presence of mind to do this mid gunfight. Side note, players who tend to have a great shot often put themselves in this position without any strategic planning way too often. And while you might win the majority of your duels, what really separates players as you improve won't be your shot making skill, it will be your decision making skills. Now to bring this all to a close and to summarize, when it comes to improving your survivability, you really want to focus on fighting that crazy lizard brain where you tunnel vision and start thirsting. These tips may not feel like they're anything special and that's true, they aren't but you'll be surprised just how far you can go by simply mastering these basics and the fundamentals. There will be moments where your fire team or your teammates are completely outclassed and you find yourself consistently overrun. These types of matches are the matches where you need to stick to these principles and make these habits permanent. This will help you in crisis situations like in comp or in trials. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you do, drop a like or a comment below. It really does motivate me to continue to put out videos like this. That's it for today. Your boy Sincere, signing out.